Hey there everyone, how's it going? Real quick video today. So I recently picked up this Tandy 1000 TL for $10 from a local seller here in Portland. And uh, there's a little bit of a problem with the hard drive though. So I want to show you a little trick on how to revive some of these old hard drives. Taking a look inside this computer, you can see that it has what is essentially a hard card. This is a 20 megabyte Western Digital 3.5 inch MFM hard drive installed on a card here that contains both the controller and the hard drive, and it has a bracket to kind of hold it all together. It's plugged into an 8-bit ISA slot. This hard drive has been having an issue. Let me show you what it's doing. The problem I'm having with this computer is the hard drive acts a little bit erratic. What happens when you turn the computer on is this drive spins up normally, it sounds fine, but then as it starts to seek, as it's doing its initial startup test, it kind of makes some strange noises. Sometimes it just spins itself down. It doesn't always boot. It just is acting a little strange. Now with old hard drives back in the day, one thing that's very different about these drives than compared to new drives is that the heads are positioned on the disc using a stepper motor. And on this drive, here's the motor right here. Now on some drives like Seagate drives, the motor is actually facing the other direction. So if you flip the drive over, you can see the bottom of the stepper motor. But on this one, as you can see, it's sort of the shaft is facing outward towards the side of the drive. Many of the three and a half inch hard drives of the time were of this style and actually proved to be slightly unreliable and later they've moved to a voice coil setup which is basically high power magnets with electromagnetic coils on there and the electronics can energize the coils in a certain way which will then position the heads very quickly and very accurately because there's no motor doing it and it's all completely electromagnetic it's not something that wears out or has issues over time but this stepper motor is very similar to the stepper motors you might find in a 3D printer or even a dot matrix printer of the time. These motors allow relatively high accuracy position, but they are not super fast. Now let's turn this hard drive on and take a look at what happens. So take a look to the shaft here, this little black mark on it. Moving back and forth that it's doing now is the normal startup test. Now, of course, it's not doing it right now, but during that test, it would make strange noise and kind of clunky sounds sometimes while it was trying to position the heads. Well, of course, now that I'm making a video, the hard drive seems to be working perfectly, but I'm still going to show you what I'm going to do to this hard drive that will make it work more reliably, and I've actually fixed another of the identical drives using this method, and I also fixed a mini scribe 20 megabyte hard drive on a Macintosh SE using this exact method. So because it's just a normal motor and it has bearings in there, what happens is over time, like the 30 years that have passed since this drive is manufactured, the bearings get a little gummed up. And what happens is stepper motors only have so much power to position themselves. And if you try to slow down the seek by, say, holding this or friction inside the bearings, you actually start to have positioning errors, which is where the weird noises come from. And then the drive controller often just shuts off the drive or it gives up with the diagnostics. So I found what works really well for reviving these drives is adding a couple drops of bearing oil into here along the shaft and it actually makes the drive work properly again. I did this on the Miniscribe drive on my Mac SE a couple years ago and it completely would never work. It would make horrible clunky noises and never boot. And now, two years later, the drive is still working absolutely flawlessly. It kind of surprised me. I thought the drive was a goner, but it actually did the trick. Now this will be the third drive I'm lubricating here, and of course this one works mostly reliably as you've seen, but I think the oil will do the trick because the other tandem version of this drive I have on my other machine completely also would not work and now works flawlessly. So what I typically use is this TriFlow Teflon synthetic lubricant. It's really designed for bicycles and stuff. And what I literally do is just add a drop of this onto here, spin the drive up, have the heads move back and forth, and then just add one more drop. And that's all it takes. Let's add the drop of oil. And as soon as it dropped there onto the bearing, it kind of got wicked up and disappeared inside. So let's spin this drive up. All right, well, it still sounds like it's working absolutely perfectly, just like it was before. But with my other tandem drive, after putting the lubricant, even the first time, on the first power cycle, it was still acting a little strange, but I power cycled it several times and it kind of got better with each time. So let's add that second drop. I'm going to give you a little bit of a close up here so it helps to wipe the oil nozzle off so it doesn't drip. But here we go. There's another drop of oil. And you saw it just sort of wicked up right onto the bearing there. And I don't know if it matters, but I find putting it on while the drive is in this orientation, of course, helps it move in there. And most likely, if I operate the drive like this, 
It'll help the oil kind of penetrate down. There is obviously going to be a bearing on this side, then there's going to be the windings for the motor, and there'll be a bearing on the other side. Okay, I have the drive connected. Let's power it up one more time. Well, there you go. It's been a few days since I did the oil trick, and the hard drive is working absolutely perfectly now. No more random seek errors. No more clunky noises. It's all good. As I said earlier in the video, I've done this on two other drives. Both of them have been working flawlessly since I've done it, and one's over two years now. So I think this is a pretty good method to fix drives. Let me know if you have any clunky drives and you were able to do the oil trick and get your drives working. I'd love to hear you know comments if this works or not for other people. I've really never saw anything online about this particular technique. So yeah, please give me some feedback. Uh, just so you know, I will have another video with more in-depth look at this Tandy 1000 and what it took to restore it. But for now, uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate a thumbs up and of course subscribe to more videos. Take care. Bye.